Good morning, good morning. Today, I am going to make Kobe cheese. I'm gonna show you how I do it. I um, normally make it with um, almost eight gallons of milk, but I don't have quite enough today, so I'm going to do it with a four gallon batch of Kobe, which will make a pretty decent size wheel. So, let's get to it. I always sterilize the pots. Vinegar, 50% white vinegar, 50% water, and I just spray it out and then wipe it down with a paper towel. gallons of milk. This is actually a five gallon pot. I could put in a little bit more, but then it won't fit in my cheese press. I have a, like a medium sized one and a large one. And if I do a large one, then it's a really thin cheese. So I do the smaller one. I could put a little bit of cream in this. Sometimes I like to add that in, but then I need to add calcium chloride because it has been, the cream has been homogenized and, and I mean, pasteurized, treated, but it makes it good. It makes it extra delicious. Maybe I'll put a I don't know, I'll think about it. Anyway, this goes on the heat, on low heat now, and it will come up to 90 degrees. And I usually set a timer for like every 10, 15 minutes or so as it gets going, <laughs> as it gets going and then keep temping it and um, till it gets to the right point. This is the cheese making book that I use for my Colby recipe. I love this book. It has very clear instructions and um, Lots of good recipes. So my Colby recipe is, okay, you can see it's all wrinkled up because I use it all the time. So these are my cultures that I use. For Colby, I was using kefir, but I think it leaves a little bit of a flavor and I'm, well, I'm not quite sold on it. Some of them have been really good and other ones have been more funky. So I am going back to using freeze-dried cultures for now because I'm a little bit gun shy. But um, this is the Floridanica. The problem is I can't find it in bulk. Um, this is as biggest as it can get and I go through it so fast. So um, just bought another pack and it's not cheap. I think this was maybe, I'm not sure, maybe like $11 for this and it will do the, the, the cultures down to here. It will do, I don't know, a number of gallons of milk, like maybe 50, but that doesn't last long here. So I'll use a teaspoon of this. I have a lot of other cultures, as you can see. I have Popionic Shimani and thermocultures and different white molds. I just got, this is what I'm excited about. Where is it? That's not that one, this one. I am excited about this because I am going to try to make um, Gouda with this one, and I think it might make it better than what I've been doing with just regular cultures, adding this meso adjunct to it, LM57. Should be good, we'll see. So the milk is heating. I heat it up on high just to bring it up pretty quick. Just stir it every now and then, bringing it up to 86 degrees. I'll set the timer for another five minutes and come back and check it. This is how precious the culture is. See, I have not quite a teaspoon and I open this up and I'm going to like scoop it up and get even more. So here is the Floridanica mesophilic culture and you can see it's not quite a teaspoon but I think with the stuff that's around it, it will equal it. And they also say that with raw milk, you do not need as much culture because the raw milk has a bunch of good stuff in it. I feel a little bit like drug dealer scraping this out so carefully. What you do is sprinkle it over the top 
and then you're gonna let it dehydrate for two minutes. You can see the, the um, culture has rehydrated. It just looks all wet. So to stir it, go in up and down motion. I kind of stir under, but then just bring it up and down and just kind of pull the rehydrated culture down into the bottom. I just clean a plate and leave that here with all my utensils and my thermometer. And so this is kind of my clean area. I sprayed it in with vinegar ahead of time. So lid on, one hour, I'll be back. All right, an hour is up. So what I'm going to do now is put the annatto in, the coloring in that makes the cheese orange, and I'm gonna put the rennet in, and that will make it set up into curd. Annatto is natural, it is fine to use. Some people are like, why bother? It's just adding color to the cheese, it doesn't need it, it's still Colby without it. Doesn't do anything to the taste flavor. And I did a Colby um, without the annatto and I miss it. I'm kind of attached to the orange color. I like it. It's what Colby is to me. So this is totally optional. I'm going to put a half teaspoon in for four gallons of milk. Not any more than that. It will get too, too bright orange. An eighth of a teaspoon per gallon. So half teaspoon. And for the rennet, I am doing, let me think, a teaspoon of rennet. What you do is you dilute both of them in water and then add it. I'll show you. Cool tap water. And this will intensify. It looks very light right now, but as the uh, curds and whey separate and it gets pressed down. This will turn nice bright orange. This is um, pasta dolce. And again, you dilute it with water, cool tap water. You don't need to measure. It's just so it incorporates easier into the milk. Now, when you're stirring this in, you do not want to stir for very long because it will start setting up. So you have to kind of move quickly um, to get it going. Up and down motions. You don't want to agitate it too much. Mix it in good. So you stir no more than 30 seconds. Well, no more than a minute. I generally aim for like 30 seconds. And I do a little bit more at the top because the cream will rise or can rise. Incorporate it so it doesn't separate out. It's like that. And this will sit for, it says 30 minutes, but I've had it take up to two hours. I'll check it in 30 minutes and then it might take 60 though, we'll see. All right, it has been 40 minutes instead of 30, 40. And let's see if it is set up. So you can see how it kind of bubbles. If we go under and then pop up, it looks pretty good, but it still seems a little bit soft. I'm gonna give it another 15 minutes and it will set up firm. Then another 15 minutes. Let's see how this is. Yep, you can see how it holds up better. It's firmer. So we're going to cut this into half inch cubes. All right, I let this sit for about uh, five minutes to kind of firm up the curd, and then I will start stirring it. It has been five more minutes, and I'm gonna show you. You can see how the curd has gotten watery. 
not watery, like it's settling and some water is pooling on top of it. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to heat this over the course of the next 30 minutes to, um, to 102 degrees. It's about 86, 87 right now. So as it is heating, I will have it on low heat and I will be continuously stirring it. Once it reaches 102 degrees, at that point you let it sit and then you start bringing the temperature down by taking off the whey and adding in cold water. And this is washing the curd. It is getting out the, the whey, the acid, it makes it a sweeter cheese. What the curd is like right now is like, a, like an egg white. And what you want is cubes of egg white. You want them to set up to the same thickness, to cook at the same temperature, the same pace, all the way through. And if I start heating it up and stirring it too fast, the outside will cook and the inside will be soft and gooey and the whey will not be leaving the curd at the same pace. It will kind of get locked in and that causes problems. So what I do first for the first five minutes or so is I don't even turn on the heat. I'll just be stirring it and it will be getting um, more and more firmed up and then I will just gradually slowly increase the heat over the course of 30 minutes till the whole thing is 102 degrees. So it's a little bit of touch and go trying to figure out where, how firm the curd is, if I need to turn the heat off for a little bit and just keep stirring it, let it get, you know, bring it all up together. So there's no exact science with it because I'm not a machine. This is not a, you know, manufacturer's kitchen. This is just my kitchen. So these big curds that haven't been cut well, you just kind of let them fall apart. And this is all very fragile curd. I don't want to go fast because it will break. And you can see some of this really is all small pieces already. I've never figured out a way how to do it consistently without getting those small shards. And I can feel the outside of the pot is colder and the inside is warmer. So let's say this curd right here, that's about the right size. And as it heats up, it will get smaller and smaller, like a raisin, it's shrinking. So you don't want to go much smaller than that. As you can see, a lot of these are smaller than that. I am not perfect and neither is my cheese. Now I'm going to stop here in a minute and let these sit for another five minutes just to let them get stronger before they start getting handled too much. I will continue to find big pieces as I go later. They'll continue to pop up, but I'm getting most of them. And you can see, even as I'm going, how, how quickly it's sinking down in and how quickly you're seeing more of the whey that's being extracted as it gets handled. I'm gonna give this about three minutes and then I'm gonna come back in and turn the heat on and let it start heating up. So three minutes later, this is what it looks like. So you can see the curd is sinking down to the bottom and that's way on top. And um, now my job is to stir this up gently for the next 30 minutes as it heats up. So I am going to test the temperature. Oh, there's a big one. 80 three degrees. So this has quite a ways to go, but it's a small pot of cheese today. So it should be heating up fairly quickly. I will turn it on low and then keep stirring. If I don't keep stirring, what happens is the, the, um, the curd at the, it all sinks like you saw. And then the pieces on the very bottom where the heat is coming up will kind of get a little melty and turn hard. And that's what I don't want to have happen. So I am constantly like scraping my knuckles over the bottom of the pot and pulling, pulling this up and bringing, just heating it through. So this is what I do for the next 30 minutes or so. I'm going to put you down and listen to a podcast. I'm now 11 minutes into this. I've been stirring and it is at 90, 91 degrees. This is what it looks like. You can see the difference in the curd size. Um, like I wish they were all this size right here, like that. 
but I have a lot of curds that are littler, like that. And um, it bothers me, but I can't do anything about it. See, you can see how I'm breaking that open. You can see how it's gooier inside and drier on the outside. So that's why you're trying to release the whey all at the same time. Probably when it gets to about 95 degrees, I'll shut the heat off for about three minutes or so, just to make sure it's cooking steady and evenly, and then let it finish up to 102. It's at 97 degrees right now. I turned the heat off. I'm letting it go for a couple more minutes. I keep that right there as a clock right above you. And I set that for 30 minutes. And then I use my microwave timer and set it for like two minutes, turn it off, two minutes, turn it on, and just kind of keep track of it that way. It doesn't have to be exactly 30 minutes till it comes to 102, but it's good to not go, um, like you don't want to rush it. Like I could crank this up and get it done in five, 10 minutes, but then the curds don't cook properly. So 30 minutes is the, the guide. And I try to keep it slow to stretch it over that amount of time and maybe go a little bit longer. You can see the size. My timer just went off. It is at 102 degrees and I am just gonna hold it here for another minute or so. I feel like some of these curds are bigger and maybe not quite as cooked as they should be. And the smaller ones are a little harder and drier and probably overcooked. This is my, I don't know, almost my 70th cheese. I still, I still am kind of confused on how to cook curd evenly and well and what I'm feeling, what I, what I should be feeling. I'm getting better. Um, I think I was going harder and faster earlier in the, in the, in my learning and now I'm going slower, but even so, I don't know. This is the curd at 102 degrees. The resistance is like spongy. Um, I'm gonna find a big one to cut open for you so you can see this one. If I split it open, you can still see, ah, turn over, there you go. You can still see that it looks dry on the outside and wetter on the inside. I don't know, I think it's cooked. It doesn't really hold together. It does some, it does some. But as it gets hotter, it heats up, it holds together more. So this is, this is good enough. You don't want to squeeze it, like, um, you don't want the curd to be extracted through the heat and through the stirring, not by pressure yet. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to let this sit with the lid on undisturbed for about five minutes. The way the curds are going to settle, the way is going to go to the top. Then I'm going to remove the whey down to the level of the curd and then add in cold water. Stir it in, the temperature drops. Do the same thing over again. First, it's supposed to drop down to 90 degrees. Then it's supposed to drop down to 75 degrees. And at that point, then I strain it off and put it in the mold. So this is just washing the curd process and it's easy and fun. It makes really sweet, delicious cheese. So now I'm taking off the whey. Some people like to put a strainer and hold a strainer underneath and then scoop the way out so the curd doesn't get in. I haven't needed to do that. I just feel like it's easier. It settles low enough that you can get a whole bunch off pretty quick. So you can see the, the curd underneath there I'm getting lower. I'm going to dump in cold water. This is actually 75 degree water, more or less, from the tap. I tempt it. And I'm gonna pour that in and stir. And I have to use both hands so you don't get to see in the pot. See how it's matting in the bottom right there and just, I'm breaking it up with my fingers and stirring it in So we're at 
right at pretty much right at 90. So I'm going to let this sit for another five minutes. The curd will have settled to the bottom and I will take off the rest of it and add more cold water. Three minutes later, five minutes, three minutes, whatever. I'm going to pour off the rest of this. And now the curds are not quite as matted together as well because they have colder water. So the temperature, reduced temperature means they don't mat. I have to be more careful taking out this way because the curds will jump into the scoop if I'm not slow about it. So I'm gonna say that's good enough. And now we're gonna add 60 degree water. Is that what you call me brown for? It's still kind of warm. It takes a little bit because as the water, the water might be cool, I might say it's cool, but then as it sits in the curds, um, it releases more of the heat and brings the water back up. So you gotta check a couple times. You can go a little bit lower. Let's just dump the last little bit of this water in. And I'm gonna say that's good enough. <laughs> Set the timer for 15 minutes. And every three to five minutes, I'll come over and give it a stir. And then I'll put it in the molds. Extend your arm out further. Hold it closer to this. Closer, like hit the mouth with this. because I want it to hold so it blocks it. Cheese! <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Ow, my hand. You're like... You're squishing my hand. Okay. So, there is the curd. <laughs> What you're looking for is that the way that is coming out is not white or milky. You want it to be clear, like what you see, that's clear. So, the, and this pressing process is, it's a light pressure, like about 20 pounds or so for the first couple hours. And then it's supposed to be at 50 pounds for eight hours. So I'll be able to get this done before bed tonight because it is noon right now. I'm just gonna pull this down to, it says that's at 20 pounds right now. I don't want to do it too heavy at first. And I'll keep checking back uh, about a half hour. I'll just push down again. You can see that the, the weight as it comes down is eventually going to hit and not go any further. So I will open it up and re and turn it so it will, it will go down in further. But I'm just letting it kind of sit at light pressure for about half an hour or so. And then I'll fiddle with it some more. So the cheese has been sitting here for almost an hour. I readjusted this little part, put in, this in, took the square out and it was higher and it's gone down this much. And so now it is time to flip it. It's coming right off the bottom, you see. See if I can flip it if it's not too crumbly. So it's beginning to knit. See how it is. 
flip it over. Then I kind of just push all the little crumbles, little curdlings. all the wrinkles out as best you can. And put the follower down in flat. And then this one. And then I use this, the square one, and get some height to it so it can press more. Now watch the way as it comes out the bottom and you can see if I would push it so hard that milky stuff came out then you would know it's too hard of pressure but if you just do it lightly enough that way comes out it should be clear and the curds are not damaged right there we're at about 30 pounds of pressure you can see it's starting to run out and that looks great so I don't want to do this at a hard press I'm going to do it more I think 30 is good I'll let it sit like that let me see the pressure. That's the marker that I go by. Um, and after a couple hours, several hours, I'll come back and flip it again and continue at about 40 pounds probably until I go to bed. And then we'll put it into the salt brine overnight. Hello, hello. It's four o'clock, which is about four hours since I put the cheese in the press. So I am going to flip it again and then keep pressing it. It's right around 30 pounds of pressure, so medium pressure till bedtime. And then I think it will be done pressing. Look how pretty it is. You can see how the curd is knitting together. It's still not fully knitted. Um, there's still gaps. See some curd, but that will change as I, as it sits in the press for another five hours or six hours or whenever I get back from the theater. That's 40 pounds and you can see no moisture is coming out. So it's pretty pressed in terms of whey extraction, but it's going to keep, keep sitting there, keep knitting together even more. It's late. It's after 11. We are back from the theater. This has, cheese has been in the press for a total of 11 hours. Said it was supposed to be in there for about eight to 10, it's fine. And now I'm going to brine it overnight. I think it says brine it for eight hours, flipping halfway through. Well, I'm not gonna get up in the middle of the night and flip it. So I will brine it all night long and then I'll probably flip it in the morning and let it go a little bit longer just because we like our cheese salty, or not bland. I think for something that's medium, Hardness, like a Colby, this is actually a little bit soft, but medium is maybe three hours per pound in the brining solution, and a hard cheese is four hours a pound, maybe. So if this is, let's say this is three pounds, that's nine hours. So going 12 hours is probably right around the right length of time. Hey, good morning. 
almost seven o'clock. I'm gonna head out on a run. So I just wanted to flip this quick and then I'll let it go probably till lunchtime. Hey, hey, yeah. It is now almost two o'clock, and this, that means that this cheese has been in this pot for maybe right around 18 hours, and it's supposed to be in there for eight hours. So it's going to probably be too salty, or maybe not. I don't know. I'll make notes and notice, learn, figure this out like six weeks from now. I'll open it up and find out. And I'm going to let it sit right here for probably till tomorrow. And you can see how the curds have knitted. Um, it's looking just great. It's all soft, but also kind of hard because it's been in the brine and it's puffed up. It will lose some of that as it dries. And that is how you make a Colby. The end. The brine goes back in this jar and I just keep it in my cold room. And reuse this over and over. I'm not sure of what the exact etiquette is, but I just keep doing it. And interestingly enough, every time there's extra, extra brine at the bottom. So I guess that means that some of this is whey, like I'm, we're sucking out more of the whey and it's being replaced by salt. You get more liquid. I don't know. I will add like another couple tablespoons of salt to this mixture and just keep going that way. So it's always like bringing the salt levels back up. I don't know if that's right, but that's what I do. Hey, good morning. I wanted to show you this cheese. So you can see that it is puffy. Like it's domed up here and it's domed out on the sides. The bottom is also puffy um, and it's also hard all over. So it's kind of solid. Let me weigh it. I'm going to backpack it this morning and just put it away for a few weeks, but kind of bulged up, which I think is cute. I don't know if that's right. I don't know if that means there's too many air holes or if it means, I don't know what it means. Three pound cheese, four gallons of milk, which is not a great, hey, coffee's ready, which is not a great yield. You should get a, a pound of cheese per gallon of milk. But because we have a Holstein, we don't. So anyway, I think it's really cute. Nice little cheese. I think it'll work fine. Three pounds. Yay.